Hey everyone, ever looked at a file with a bunch of strange tags and wondered, how on earth do I get the data out of this? You know, files that look a little something like this one here on the screen? They're called XML files, and they're everywhere. Today, we're going on a little adventure to learn how to master these files. We'll be using one of the most popular and friendly programming languages out there, Python. We'll go from a complete beginner to confidently reading, parsing, and extracting all the juicy information you need. Maybe you've tried to open one of these files with a regular text editor and just got a wall of text, or you've heard that it's a complicated process. The good news is, it's not. I'm going to show you a simple, straightforward method that will have you grabbing data from XML files in no time. So, let's get started and turn that daunting wall of text into usable information. So, first things first, what exactly are we dealing with? XML, it stands for Extensible Markup Language. Now, if you've ever seen an HTML file for a web page, this might look a little familiar. That's because they're both markup languages. But there's a big, important distinction. HTML is all about displaying data. It tells your web browser how to format text, where to put images, and how to make a web page look pretty. Think of it as the designer. XML, on the other hand, is a simple, plain text way to store and transport data. It doesn't care how the data looks, it only cares about what the data is. It's like a filing cabinet for information. It organizes data using a logical tree-like structure of custom tags. This makes it a great way to share data between different applications and systems. So why do we even bother with XML? Well, it has some great advantages. First, it's platform independent. A file created on a Windows machine can be easily read on a Mac, a Linux machine, or any other system. This makes it super flexible for sharing data. Second, it's human readable. If you open an XML file, you can often get a good sense of what's going on just by looking at the tags. For example, a tag like book or author is pretty self-explanatory. Third, it's self-descriptive. The tags themselves tell you what the data is. You don't need a separate document to explain the file's contents. And finally, it's a standardized format. It's been around for a long time and is still widely used for data exchange, especially for things like RSS feeds and configuration files. It's a reliable workhorse for data storage. XML is more common than you might think. Let's look at a few places you'll find it. You might have heard of RSS feeds. These are XML files that are used to publish frequently updated works, like blog entries or news headlines. They allow you to subscribe to a feed and get the latest content automatically. Another huge use is for configuration files. Many software applications use XML to store settings and preferences. It's a great way to store structured data that a program needs to run. It's also a major player in data exchange, which is why we're talking about it today. When two different systems need to talk to each other and share data, XML is often used as the language for that conversation. And here's a fun fact. The modern format for Microsoft Word documents, .docx, is actually a zipped collection of XML files. When you create a document, you're basically creating a bunch of structured XML data that tells Word how to format everything. All right, let's get to the good stuff. How do we actually do this in Python? The great news is we don't need to install any new libraries. Python comes with a powerful built-in module called xml.etre.elementtree. This module is designed specifically for working with XML data. It's simple, efficient, and best of all, you already have it. The name element tree is a big clue. It takes our XML file and turns it into a tree structure in our program's memory. This makes it super intuitive to navigate and find the exact piece of data you're looking for, just like climbing a tree and grabbing a specific apple. Okay, let's write our first bit of code. The very first thing we do is import the library. We'll use the line import xml.etree.elementtree as et. The as et part is a common convention that just makes our code a little shorter and easier to read. Next, we parse the file. Parsing is just a fancy word for reading the file and turning it into a structure that Python can understand. We use et.parse and pass in the name of our XML file, in this case, data.xml. This gives us a tree object. 
From that tree object, we can get the root element using tree.getRoot. The root is the topmost element of our XML tree, the trunk, if you will. Once we have the root, we can easily access its tag and attributes. The print statements here show us what we get back. This is our starting point for all our XML explorations. Now that we have the root, let's start moving through the tree. An element object in Python, like our root, can be treated like a list of its children. This means we can use a simple for loop to go through each child element one by one. In this example, let's imagine our XML file has a root element called catalog, and inside it are a bunch of book elements. Our for loop, for book and root, will go through each of those book elements. Inside the loop, we can print out the tag of the current element using book.tag. And here's the key. To find a specific child element within our current element, we use the find method. So book.findTitle will find the title element inside the current book. Then we can grab the text inside that element using .text. This lets us pull out the title, author, and price of each book. All right, time for a real world example. Imagine we've got a small movie database stored in an XML file. Our goal is to read this file and display the movie titles, directors, and release years in our program. The XML file is pretty straightforward. The root element is movie list, and inside we have a list of movie elements. Each movie has a title, director, and year tag. This is a common way to store structured data. Our task is to write a Python script that can navigate this tree and pull out the specific information we need for each movie. This is a classic data extraction problem. Here's the code to solve our movie database problem. First, we do our standard import and parse the movies.xml file to get the root. Now, instead of just iterating over the root, which in this case has only child elements that are movie elements, we'll use find all. This is a handy method that finds all elements with a specific tag name. In this case, root.findAllMovie will give us a list of all the movie elements. Then, we use our for loop to go through each movie in that list. Inside the loop, we grab the text from the title, director, and year child elements using find and .text and store them in variables. Finally, we use a formatted print statement to display the information in a nice, readable format. And when we run our code, this is the output we get. As you can see, the program successfully read the XML file, navigated the tree structure, and pulled out the specific pieces of information we wanted. We got the title, director, and year for each movie, neatly formatted on the screen. This simple example shows the power of elementary for basic data extraction. For our second example, let's look at something more common in software development, configuration files. Many applications store their settings in XML. Here, we have a file named config.xml. It has a config root element and inside a database element. Notice that the database element has an attribute, type equals post -E SQL. Inside the database element, we have all the connection details. Our goal is to read this file and grab these specific settings, like the host, port, user, and password, so our application can use them to connect to the database. This is a very practical use of XML parsing. Here's the solution for our configuration file problem. Again, we start by parsing the file and getting the root. Then we find the specific database element using root.find database. Now, how do we get the attribute? We use .attrib.get type on the DB element. This gives us the value of the type attribute. After that, it's business as usual. We use find and .text to get the values for the host, port, user, and password, just like we did with our movie example. Finally, we print out the results to show that we've successfully retrieved all the settings from the XML file. Our application can now use these variables to establish a connection. And this is the output. We successfully extracted not only the text inside the elements, but also the attribute from the database element. This shows how powerful element tree is for handling different parts of an XML document. We can use it to get the text inside a tag and also the attributes associated with that tag. This is a crucial skill for working with more complex XML files. So let's quickly recap what we've learned today. 
We started with the basics. What is an XML file and why would we even care about it? We then dove into the heart of the matter and saw how Python's built-in element tree module makes reading these files a breeze. We walked through the step-by-step -step process of parsing, navigating the tree, and extracting data. And we solidified our understanding with two practical real-world examples, one for a movie database and one for a configuration file. Now, the best way to really learn this stuff is to practice. So I encourage you to grab a simple XML file, maybe an RSS feed from a website you like, and try to parse it yourself. Explore other methods in the element tree library like iter, which is great for finding all elements with a specific tag anywhere in the tree. And when you're ready for more advanced tasks, you can even check out other libraries like LXML, which is known for its speed and powerful features. You've got the skills to start reading XML files in Python, so go forth and start pulling that data. And that's a wrap. I am Dr. Zishan Bhatti, and thanks for watching this video on Learn with W3 Schools. If this tutorial helped you, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more quick coding tutorials on Learn with W3 Schools channel.